Hey, what is up, house youth? It's Pastor Steven here, coming to you from my living room. Yeah, I've got some pumpkins, I've got some foliage. It's it's great. Um, yeah. So, hey, thanks for joining us. Um, I just want to say welcome uh, to HY Online. Uh, I know this is not ideal. I know that we would rather be in person, um, but this is just for a, a little while. We're going to be online, um, and we're, we're ultimately we're following the leadership of our church. We just want to be in unity. Um, and so we will be back before you know it, but right now this is our circumstance. This is where we're at And so why don't you just take a minute uh, say something in the comment section? Why don't you uh, copy and paste the link send it to a friend invite somebody to come watch? It's never been easier to invite somebody to church than right now in this moment um, But man, I'm super excited. I've got a word for you tonight. We're gonna continue our, our, our series in Hebrews um, I've got scripture on my phone. I've got the Bible in my hand. Um, I hope that you got a Bible. I hope that you got something to take notes with because um, we're going to preach. I'm going to preach it like I feel it. Um, hey, how was that Halloween party last week? Again, I, it was like we were together last week and now here we are online, but uh, man, I'm just, I'm so grateful that we have the ability to still connect in some way. Um, but man, um, super excited. Tonight we're going to be continue, continuing our Hebrews series. Um, again, we had Pastor Hannah open up. She did such a good job. Um, she was in Hebrews 1 and 2. Then I was in Hebrews 3 and we talked about um, sharing your faith. We talked about how you got to keep your eyes on Jesus and how ultimately we need to live as Christians under the authority of Jesus. And that's really when life flourishes in Christianity. It's really when life flourishes with Jesus. Um, I'm, I'm super excited tonight to continue in Hebrews chapter four. So if you got a Bible, open up to Hebrews chapter four, and I'm just going to start reading um, and you can follow along. But Hebrews chapter four, we're going to read in verse 12 and 13. And this is what it says. This is what it says. For the word of God is alive and active. It is powerful. It's er, sorry. It, it, yeah, it's alive and powerful. Other translations will say it's alive and active. This one says it's alive and powerful. It is sharper than the than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable. That's what it says in Hebrews 4. I'm excited to kind of dive into that. I've got some additional thoughts I'm going to throw on top, but ultimately tonight we're going to talk about the Word of God, the importance of the Word of God. Now I know as, you know, if, if you've been in church for a while, you think like the Bible, it's like, really, we're going to talk about the Bible again? Like how many times are we going to talk about the Bible? Well, we're going to talk about the Bible a lot because it's so important. And tonight, if you're taking notes, um, I just, this is my title. This is maybe, I don't know, the most random title I've ever had, but I'm just calling it the word for you, the word in you, the word for you, the word in you. Um, and tonight, um, I, I'm, I'm super excited to talk about the importance of the word of God, the importance of the word of God. Um, see, I think most of us, we, we, we believe that the word of God is important. Um, but if you're like most people, uh, Sometimes reading the Bible kind of feels like a chore. Um, it's really interesting. Most Jewish kids, most Jewish like uh, children, they would actually memorize the first five books of the Bible by the time they were 13 years old. It's really crazy. I, I, I still haven't done that. I'm a pastor. I, I, I don't know what Deuteronomy 8, 16 says. I, I can't tell you. Uh, but I love it because they were, they were actually taught 
that the words in the Bible, the words in the Bible, they were actually um, like a love letter to them from God himself. I think it's so cool. I think it's so amazing that the way they look at scripture. And it's not to like make you feel bad or on the other side, it's not to really puff you up. But just for a moment, I want you to think about how important is the Bible to you? How important is it? It, Let me ask it this way. If you were unable to read the Bible for an entire year, if you were unable to hear anything from it or read it, uh, would you miss it? Would it make you like sad? Would it make you, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a bad mood? Like, like, would that be upsetting to you? Like, like how important is the word of God? See, I think that the enemy, he wants us to overlook the word of God. I think the enemy knows what a weapon the word of God is against him. We're going to talk about that a little later, but I I think the enemy would want us to, to, uh, be so familiar with the word, with the word, with the Bible that we wouldn't even get into it. It just becomes cliche. It becomes white noise. And so for the next couple of moments, I want to explain, I got, I got four points for you tonight, but I want to explain to you why it's important, what roles it plays in our lives. Why do we want it? Why should we want it? Why, why should we need it? You know, and I want to talk about that. Um, before I do, let me pray for you real quick. Jesus, we love you so much. And God, again, we're just so thankful that we have the opportunity to, to meet online at least. Um, Lord, we're so, so excited and so looking forward to getting back in person. Um, but Lord, right now, um, we know that you can do anything through, through anything. And so Jesus, we pray that you would just use this tonight. God, use this video tonight to speak to us, but also speak to somebody who doesn't know you. God, speak to somebody who, uh, who needs to meet you, who needs to have an encounter with you, Jesus. God, I pray that these wouldn't just be uh, you know, a moment staring at a screen, but God, we would truly, truly right now encounter your presence. We would encounter your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I just pray that you would just come right now and invade our space wherever we're at. We're watching with a group. We're watching by ourselves. God, you would invade our space. We would feel your presence with us tonight. Lord, help me communicate this word you put in inside of me. We love you. We pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I think the first thing we have to realize when we start talking about the Word of God is that we have to understand that the, that, the, that the Word of God is the person of Jesus Christ. The Word of God is the person of Jesus Christ. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, check out John. John chapter 1. I've got my scripture here. John chapter 1. It says this, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was was with God and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. You go to verse 14 and it says, so the word became human and he made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the father's one and only son. I think it's so important that we understand that when we open the Bible, we ought to understand that this is the person of Jesus, that Jesus is the word of God, that another name for God, another name for Jesus is the word. Um, and I think it's really cool because when you open the gospels, you see Jesus preaching the word. He was, he was the word preaching the word. Um, kind of, kind of crazy, kind of trippy. Um, but the whole point of that is that this whole book, it points to Jesus. It's all about him. We'll see a little later. We're going to look at a verse, um, but it's from John five and Jesus is talking to Pharisees. I won't get into it yet, but he basically tells them like, like you, 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 you're so stuck in the book. You're so stuck in the scriptures, in the Bible, looking for eternal life. Yet I'm the one who the Bible's all about. It's all about me. And when we talk about the Bible, um, really what we, uh, what, what we know and what we're um, familiar with is the written word. It's what it's called. It's the written word. It's the Bible, right? And all over, Bible, all over the Bible, all over scripture, I don't have time to get into like 15 verses, but I'm going to give you one. But we are kind of commanded to, to study the Bible. Not just read it, not just kind of have it on our nightstand, but actually study the Bible. Um, one of, I, I love this verse in Psalms 1. It says, Oh, the joys. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with the mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. I love that. The law of the Lord would be the Bible. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit in each season, and their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. I mean, come on, that's 
that's amazing. I, I want to be like that. And it says that person, the result of meditating on this book, on God's word day and night is that you would be this image of this tree planted by the water, bearing fruit in every season, your leaves never wither and you prosper in all you do. I think that that's amazing. Um, but really, I got four points tonight. And I'm not, I don't want to take too long, um, but I got four points for you tonight. Um, and so I'm just going to jump right into them. Again, please take notes. I think this is going to be good. I'm going to say some things no doubt you've heard before, um, but I'm praying that God's going to give us a fresh perspective on his word tonight. So if you're taking notes, the first thing you can write down is that the word is your spiritual food. Right? Like, too much. Too far, Stephen. Okay. Like, eat the word, right? Um, <laughs> sometimes I just do things, and it's, it's great. It's a good, good time to have fun. But, but the word, uh, it, it, it's your spiritual food. You got to understand this. It's like, your, it's like food for your soul. Okay? Food for your soul. It's like the Bible uh, will refer to itself as bread. I love bread. Anybody love bread? I, I find out, like, bread's my favorite food. Like, it's just so good. Bread's and everything. Like, Pizza, burgers, you know, anything you could think of, pastries, donuts. I'm getting kind of hungry. Anyways, um, but but I, I love this story so much. Jesus, he he gets baptized. Um, the Holy Spirit uh, descends on him like a dove. God speaks in his audible voice. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus then goes into the wilderness to fast for 40 days. And he's hungry, he's starving, he's fasting, he hasn't eaten. And the devil comes to him and he says, hey, you know, if you're the son of God, you can turn those stones into bread. And Jesus will refer back to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy. He'll say that man should not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. But the, the, the Bible, you got to understand something. Jesus wants us to know, listen to me, that just like we need physical food, to keep us going, your soul needs spiritual food to keep you going. See, the Word of God is like literal food for your soul. And I think some of us, some of us, we've convinced ourselves that like studying the Bible is, it, it, it's really just for pastors and for like people who are spiritually mature. It's for leaders. You know, that's, who it's, that's who it's really for. It's not really for me. It's for like the people who are like really spiritually mature. But can I tell you, like, like if you would start to see your Bible as food, if you would start to see your Bible as bread, listen to me, you would understand that Bible study is actually about surviving before it's about maturing. Yes, it's about maturing. Yes, we want to be spiritually mature. But how many of you know, like, I just need to survive. And this, this word, this Bible is like food for my soul. It's like food for my soul. Listen to me, something that you need to understand is that the word of God, like I'm saying, it's food for your soul. But what I want you to understand something about your soul is that your soul is always feeding on something. Now, I know that's, that's kind of creepy, okay? Like, but you got to understand, like your soul needs food just like your body needs food. And so often what happens is when we don't feed our soul the word of God, our soul begins to feed on other things. Listen to me. What I mean by that is your soul, it... It, it longs to be fulfilled. It longs to be satisfied. It longs to, 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 be, to, to, to receive uh, fulfillment and wholeness. Listen to me. You were created to long for your creator. And that is why our soul, it tends to long for things. It needs fulfillment. Sometimes we find that fulfillment in all sorts of things. Relationships, social media, you know, entertainment, whatever it is. And we, when, we, when we go to that stuff, that stuff's not necessarily bad in and of itself. Unless we're, unless we're looking to that to bring fulfillment. And when we understand that God is actually our source of fulfillment, that the word is like food for our soul, so many things change. See, when we, when we look to like relationships and social media and all that stuff to get our fulfillment, we might not even know we're doing it, but we are. What happens is instead of getting God's truth and his peace and his love and his grace, right? Instead of getting his fulfillment, we end up getting this false sense of fulfillment from the world. And what it results in is lies and it leads to comparison and it leads to depression and it leads to anxiety. And you have to understand something that God has set up, up his word to, to be able to eat, to be able to feed on, to be able to fulfill your soul. But one thing I want you to remember throughout this whole message is that Jesus is the word. Don't forget that. So although the word is food and, and we need that, listen to me, 
We don't put our trust in food. We put our trust in the one who supplies the food. Amen? Right? We don't put our trust in just the words, right? We put our trust in the one who is behind and the one who fulfills all of these words. I, I, I'm reminded of John chapter 6, and I, I, I want to hurry with this because it's not in my notes, but, but John chapter 6, Jesus does this great miracle. He feeds, you know, 18, 20,000 people with one little boy's lunch, and then he goes across the water, and the people, they follow him, and they basically, they talk about all kinds of things, but they basically um, tell him that, hey, Jesus, why don't you just perform another miracle and prove to us that you are who you say you are? And you're, it's, it's like he just did a miracle. And now you're wanting him to do another miracle. And it speaks volumes to me that miracles are really never going to be enough. Only Jesus can be enough. Jesus will, he'll start to allude to the fact and he'll say something really weird. He'll say, um, he said, he says that you are to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Um, do you remember that your soul needs food and the word of God is like food for your soul? Stephen, are you saying that, that we should eat Jesus? Like, kind of, not really, but like kind of, I mean, Jesus, and, and as creepy as that sound is, as weird as that is, like that's what Jesus is alluring to. And what he's saying is, he, he's saying that it, what, what he's setting up for us today is it's not necessarily the, the, just the words that you need to get. It's the person behind the words. It's the person that this whole book is about. See, listen to me. I don't just want the promise. I want the promise giver. I don't just want the miracle. I want the man attached to the miracle. I don't just want healing. I want God's heart. I don't just want some sustenance. No, no, no. I want the spirit to fill me inside and out. And so Stephen, why is it so important that I see that this is bread? Well, because I need to keep it at the forefront of my mind. I need this every day. Just like I need breakfast and lunch and dinner. I need this for my soul. It's so important. It's so important. And Jesus, he'll lay, after he says that you got to eat my flesh and drink my blood, he'll say this. He'll say, I am the bread of life. I'm the bread of life. And it's so good that we don't just, we're not just getting, you know, the bread, but we're getting the bread of life when we encounter God in scripture. Um, and so that's, that's, that's my first point that the Bible, the word of God is it, spiritual food. It's spiritual food. Uh, my second point is, is kind of twofold. It's kind of twofold. And my second point is that the word is your spiritual weapon. It's a weapon. Like it's a weapon, right? I'm sure you could kind of, I'm not saying that you got to like beat somebody over the head with it. That's not what I'm saying. Um, but when we get to Hebrews 4, when we get to Hebrews 4, we're going to see that the writer's letting us know that the Word of God, it's a weapon against two things. Um, the, the Word of God is food for your soul. That was bonus. But now let's get into Hebrews 4. The Word of God, it's a weapon against two things. It's a weapon against, number one, the enemy. Right? It's a weapon against the enemy. The Bible, Hebrews 4 says that, that the word of God is alive and it's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. The word is a weapon. Yet here's, here's where we oftentimes go wrong. It's so often we try to use this weapon against other people. See, God never intended this to be a weapon against your brother and sister in Christ. So many of us, we, we don't understand that we're in a battle. We don't understand that we are under attack. We, we don't understand that we are in a spiritual battle. We don't understand that, you, that we have an enemy that, listen to me, he doesn't like us very much. In fact, he hates us. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy us. But everything changes when I understand that this is my weapon against the enemy. Listen to me, this is how I fight back. Can I, take, can I say it this way? The only reason you wouldn't want a weapon is if you thought you were never going to be attacked. Yeah. Like if I told you you were going to be attacked, you would be like, you would either try to avoid the situation, right? Or you would be like, I need a weapon to defend myself. Like if I told you that, hey, at any moment, you can't predict it, you're going to be attacked. Your, your, your best option is to get a weapon on you, to get a weapon in you. We don't just need a weapon on us. We need a weapon in us. And, and, and I think so often we don't know that we're in a battle. And so we don't know that we need this. <laughs> but I need to tell you today, as, as I know it's not super popular preaching, but you are in a battle and you have an enemy. And this is how I fight back. And it seems like, can I be honest? It seems like a lot of Christians, we don't really know who our enemy is. 
we spend more time fighting with each other than we do with the enemy. But what, is, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? In Ephesians 6, Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 12, and I'll just read verse 17. It says, Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Listen to this. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. We are not fighting against humans. We are not fighting against each other, but we are fighting against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. And skip down to verse 17. Put on salvation as your helmet and take, listen, the sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which is the word of God. So you got to understand The word of God is your spiritual weapon against the enemy. But the second part is one that we're not oftentimes familiar with. But the word of God, listen to me, is a weapon against yourself. And I want to use that word weapon really lightly because it it sounds really aggressive. But it's kind of a weapon against yourself. So what you have to understand is there's not just an enemy on the outside that you're in a battle with. There is also an enemy on the inside. Oftentimes, if we're being honest, we're our own worst enemy. We, we lie to ourselves more than anyone lies to us. We let ourselves down more than anybody has. Um, see, I've got a threat on the inside. I've got this thing called sin. I've got this thing called flesh. If you want to read more about that, I don't have time, but you can get into Galatians chapter 5. You can read about the fruit that the flesh will produce and the fruit that the Spirit produces. And see, the writer of Hebrews, he, he, he lets us know that we have a weapon. And it's sharp. He says it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Um, and we see in Ephesians, we just read moments ago, that we are in a spiritual battle. And our fight is not against each other, but it's against dark forces outside of us. And the Word is the sword of the Spirit. But it's also a sword, it says, that cuts between soul and spirit, between bone and marrow. It is so sharp. Basically what it's saying is it can cut through anything. Nothing can, can, can get away from it. it. It says this, I love this, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. I love how the message puts it. It says this, God means what he says. What he says goes. His powerful word is as sharp as a surgeon's scalpel, cutting through everything, whether doubt or defense, laying us open to listen and obey. Nothing and no one is impervious to God's word. We can't get away from it no matter what. What does that mean? It means that nobody is impenetrable to God's word. And this weapon, this weapon, this word, it fights the enemy, but it also fights the flesh. It also fights myself. You see, what I love so much about the word of God, I love Um, that the writer of Hebrews is telling us tonight is so often you think that you're reading the Bible, but can I tell you the Bible is reading you. (laughs) It's so, it's so cool. The Bible's the only book that you think you're studying it, but it's actually studying you. It says it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires and it it helps us to see what needs to be changed. It helps us to, to, to see what's not of God. And what's so important is again, that we remember that Jesus is the word of God. Remember, I, I quoted it earlier, but he says in John 5, Jesus, he says this, he says, he says you, you search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life, but the scriptures point to me, yet you refuse to come to me to receive this life. See, many times we can approach scripture, either we don't pick it up or, or, or when we do pick it up, we kind of we approach it like we're reaching for a tool in a toolbox instead of meeting with a person. See, oftentimes we'll, we'll use the Bible to, to support our desires. We use the Bible to support our perspectives. We use the Bible to fit our bias. But the truth is, is that Scripture reads us. Scripture searches us. Scripture reveals to us our true status and identity. And this happens because we meet the person of God within the pages of Scripture. So we have to read the Bible as though Jesus is waiting for us in its pages. He wants to meet you. He wants to love you. He wants to correct you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to change you. He wants to reveal himself to you in this book. Lastly, I just have one more thought. One more thought. And that is that the word of God heals. 
The Word of God, it's your food. It's your spiritual food. It's also your spiritual weapon against the enemy and against yourself. But lastly, I want to say this. The Word of God, it heals. Because when we read that verse in the message and you, you, you see that you see that the Word of God, it exposes you. Like, what's your response? What's your response to exposure? When you hear that, when you hear that, that, that sentence, that God, like the Word of God is going to expose you. Is your response fear? Is your response worry? Is it anxiety? Is it, is it, is it, or, you know, is it negative or is it positive? Is it, is it expectancy? Is it excitement? See, what I want to tell you, the good news about Jesus, the good news about God is that God never exposes you to embarrass you. He always exposes you to show you what he wants to change, to show you what can get better, to show you, um, to show you that the error of, 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 of your sin nature because he loves you too much to leave you the way you are. And I think so often we fear that exposure. We, we run away from the exposure because we don't, we don't, we don't want God to, to, to embarrass us. We don't want God to be disappointed in us. But in all reality, he's just really trying to love us. He's just really trying to shape us and mold us and transform us into the image that he has called us to be. I love Psalms 147.3. It says that he heals the brokenhearted and he bandages their wounds. Can I say that either now or at some point in life, you're, you're either hurting now or you're going to be hurting. And I've found through personal experience, the best way to go through pain, honestly, the best way to go through pain is just to go right through it. Um, I, I absolutely believe the Holy Spirit um, can, can work through somebody and he can, he can, by the laying on of hands, physical, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual healing can come in a moment. But I really honestly believe this, that the word of God, it heals and it heals something so important. It heals your soul. It heals your soul. Uh, I want to, I want to, I want to leave you with this verse. It says this in Psalm 107, 19 through 20, Lord help. They cried in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. So good, so awesome. I wrote this, this down in my notes this week um, and I, you can write it down if you want, but, it, but it, I said this, if you, feel your, if you fill your mind with God's word, there will be no room for Satan's lies. I love the word of God. It's so important. And I pray that God is, is revealing to you and to me how important it is, the roles it plays. This is, this is our spiritual food. But more than that, when we get into this, we don't just find words. We don't just find bread. We find the bread of life. We find Jesus himself. We find this, this God who wants to reveal himself to us. This God who, who actually says, if you partake of me, you'll never thirst again. You'll never hunger again. I am the great satisfaction of your soul. Absolutely. You know, video games and movies and relationship and social media, it will bring satisfaction to you. But one, it will bring only momentary satisfaction, but two, it will bring a false satisfaction that will later result in negative thoughts, negative desires, negative life. And Jesus is saying, if you come to him, he'll give you a satisfaction and a fulfillment that your soul is really longing for. He's the bread of life. He's, his word is a weapon. It's a weapon against the enemy. Are you afraid? Are you, do you feel unequipped? Do you feel, do you feel like you don't have what you need? Are, are, are you facing anxiety? Are you facing depression? Are you facing heartache? These are things that, that God has actually set up in the word to protect us, to fight back. This is how we fight back. And the word is, it's a weapon against ourselves. I'm so thankful that God, he, he looks into my innermost thoughts, my innermost desires, and he allows me to see what needs to change. And he does that because the word, it, it heals, it heals. I love you guys so much. And, and, and again, I'm just so grateful that you joined us online. Um, and, and I hope this word encouraged you. I hope, I know it's a kind of a practical word. Um, I hope you took notes and I hope that we can go from here with a new perspective of the word of God. 
Um, but man, I'm so excited um, to continue our Hebrew series. We've got two more weeks of our Hebrew series. Um, but right now, I want to take a moment and I want to pray for you. Um, so if you could close your eyes, if you could bow your head and just pray with me for a moment. God, I thank you so much for who you are. God, we thank you so much for the power of your word. God, these truths um, that we discovered, these truths that we uncovered tonight, God, that your word is, is, is so much, Lord. I pray that as we, as we move on from tonight, as these moments we just had together um, around your word, God, that we would move forward with a new hunger for your word, God, but a new sense and perspective of the importance of your word, God, of the Bible, of the scriptures. Uh, God, I just thank you so much that you are our satisfaction, Jesus. Um, not just the words in, in on, on the pages in this book, but God, um, the one who's behind it. God, I thank you that when we open up our, our Bible, God, we don't just look for principles, but we look for a person. We look for you, Jesus. Um, and God, I thank you that you have equipped us. The reality is, is God, we are in a battle. So much can be explained in life because we realize that we are either in a battle with the enemy or we are in a battle with ourselves. And God, I, I thank you that you've equipped us. You've put something in our hands. And God, when we have the, the revelation that, that somebody wants to attack us, that something wants to attack us, God, a spiritual force wants to attack us, God, you've given us the word as the sword of the spirit. And I thank you so much, Lord, that your, your word is... It, it, it's infallible, God. It, nothing can touch it. Nothing can overcome it. God, I declare that any, every single weapon that's formed against us will not prosper. Um, and Jesus, we just thank you so much for the, for the weapon of your word, God, against the enemy and against our own desires, against our own thoughts. Um, and, and Lord, we thank you so much that your word, it heals. It heals our soul. It heals our hearts. It heals our minds. Jesus, you say that if we want to be transformed, we would do that by the renewing of our mind. God, let us be renewed by the, by the word. Let us be renewed by the, the washing of the word, Jesus. Um, I thank you so much, Jesus, that you are so good. You are so faithful. And I pray for every person listening to this, this, uh, this message online right now, whether they're at home or in the car, or maybe this is later on in the week. Jesus, I, I just thank you that you are there with them. God, that they are not alone, but Jesus, you're there with them. And, and God, ultimately tonight, we, we always want to give an opportunity um, for you to give your life to this Jesus. More than, more than the word being all these awesome things, Jesus being your Lord and Savior is, is really at the core, the, the, the foundation of what you need. And, and if you haven't made that decision, I, I, want, I want to... I want to take a moment and, and give you a chance to, to respond. Um, again, if you're, if you're with a group of people, I just, um, I'd ask that maybe eyes are closed, heads are bowed, but you want to just respond outwardly to what God is doing on the inside of you. It seems to make, it makes it more real. Um, but if that's you, you're saying today is your day. Um, you, you want to receive the free gift of salvation that only Jesus can offer. Um, if that's you, you want to nod at the Lord. You want to lift your hand up. Um, I want to pray for you. Um, and of course, if you could reach out to me, if you could reach out to our Instagram page, um, um, let us know that you made that decision. Um, DM us, comment, whatever, whatever you can do to just let us know that you made that decision. Uh, we would love to connect with you. Um, but if you're making that decision today, listen to me. The Bible says that, that the... The Bible says that, that Jesus, um, his, his gift of salvation is absolutely free. So nothing, you, nothing you can do to earn it. All you, all you can do is receive it. You receive it by faith. You, you put your faith in Jesus that he is who he says he is. He is the savior of the world. He is the Lord of our life. Um, he did come and die on a cross for our sins. And he did raise from the dead. And he is coming back. To, 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 for his bride to bring us to heaven one day. Um, if that's you and you want to make a decision again, you can respond um, by lifting your hand. You can respond by sending us a DM on Instagram. Um, but ultimately, I just pray this prayer with me in your heart, in your head, out loud. Whatever you want to do, just pray, pray this with me. But um, dear Jesus, I receive you. I believe you are who you say you are. Today, I'm putting my trust in you. I'm putting my faith in you. I want to follow you. 
I want you to be the Lord of my life. Take away all of my sin. I don't want it anymore. I want a relationship with you. Today, I'm new. Today, I'm forgiven. And today, I'm loved. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, that is so amazing. Once again, thank you guys so much for joining us online. Hey, we have some amazing things planned um, for Mondays and Fridays on social media. Um, I'm going to put the Instagram handle here and please don't miss out. Mondays and Fridays, we're going to have some awesome stuff on Instagram. Um, and then every Wednesday uh, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be right here online. I'm super excited to continue. We're going to be continuing our Hebrew series uh, next week. Um, and we will be back in person before you know it. Um, but yeah, we love you guys so much. And we just want to say have a blessed week. Um, hope to see you on all of our activities that we're going to have going on on social media. Um, be blessed. We love you.